We're gonna go to our um, to our message today. We're at the fifth week of Beyond Kings and Kingdoms. Masaya po ako sa preaching series na to. I, I feel like it has helped us uh, to be able to gain a global perspective of what God is doing, even in the context of our national elections. Maliban po doon, nakita natin na the rule of God and the work of God is beyond kings and kingdoms and presidents and rulers. Lalo na po yung role ng church. The role of the church is beyond kings and kingdoms. Ako po mismo ay dumaan na rin sa, I had an opportunity to participate in at least five presidential elections in my lifetime. Uh, Tapos yung lahat po ng yon, ang trabaho natin bilang church is to be able to work through that, work behind the scenes to be, or, or to even be at the forefront of leadership. Tapos biglang through the years, nagtatrabaho lang talaga tayo, nagtatrabaho na din disciple yung nation. At consistent po yun. Uh, the past 38 years that Victory, since Victory was started in the Philippines, and I'm gonna tell a few stories uh, of that in a short while. Pero the idea that what God's, pur- God's purpose and the role of the church is beyond the presidential elections, beyond kings and kingdoms, and we're called by God to consistently serve through the years, whether in prominence or obscurity. And that's what we'd like to study today. If you have a Bible, would you kindly turn with me to, da- to Daniel chapter 5? And if you could stand, uh, stand po, uh, on your feet as we read from Scripture. Yeah, Daniel chapter 5, we're going to read from verses 17 to 31. So hopefully, uh, if you have a Bible, go ahead and read with us. Daniel 5 verse 17. And then we'll pray. Sabi po rito, verse 17. Then Daniel answered and said before the king, Let your gifts be for yourself and give your rewards to another. Nevertheless, I will read the writing to the king and make known to him the interpretation. O king, the most high, the most high God gave Nebuchadnezzar, your father, kingship and greatness and glory and majesty. And because of the greatness that he gave him, all peoples, nations, and languages trembled and feared before him. Whom he would, he killed. And whom he would, he kept alive. Whom he would, he raised up. And whom he would, he humbled. But when his heart was lifted up and his spirit was hardened so that he dealt proudly, he was brought down from his kingly throne and his glory was taken from him. He was driven from among the children of mankind and his mind was made like that of a beast and his dwelling was with the wild donkeys. He, he was fed grass like an ox and his body was wet with the dew of heaven until he knew that the Most High God rules the kingdom of mankind and sets over it whom he will. And you, his son, Belshazzar, have not humbled your heart. Though you knew all this, but you have lifted up yourself against the Lord of heaven. And the vessels of his house have been brought in before you. And you and your lords, your wives and your concubines have drunk wine from them. And you have praised the gods of silver and gold, of bronze, iron, wood and stone, which do not see or hear or know, but the God in whose hand is your breath and whose, and whose are all your ways, you have not honored. Then from his presence, the hand was sent and this writing was inscribed. And this is the writing that was inscribed. Mene, mene, tekel, and parsing. This is the interpretation of the matter. Mene, God has numbered the days of your kingdom and brought it to an end. Tekel, you have been weighed in the balances and found one thing. Peres, your kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and Persians. Verse 29. Then Belshazzar gave the command and Daniel was clothed with purple. A chain of gold was put around his neck and a proclamation was made about him that he should be the third ruler of the kingdom. That very night, Belshazzar the Chaldean king was killed and Darius the Mede received the kingdom being about 62 years old. Let's just pray. Lord, thank you for that long story but grateful for the way that you would give us an example of how you rule the kingdoms of the earth and how you lead us, lead these rulers, and how you lead us to even get involved in some ways in certain areas of leadership in these nations. Allow us, Lord, to see our place. 
Lord, so continue to move forward today with the idea that your rule and the role of the church is beyond kings and kingdoms. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Go ahead and take your seats. Mahababa po yung binasa ko na yung nakwento, ano? Last week, uh, well, two weeks ago, no, pagkatapos nung, nung election, medyo we're still in the post-election chaos and tension. Ang daming mga bagay na nangyari, nagtuloy pa rin. People have still continued to divide the lines. Pero ang kagandahan naman, uh, when we as the church also called people out and told them, ang ministry natin, reconciliation. Ang trabaho natin, peacemaker. So awat na. Awat na. Halika na mga magbati-bati na tayo. Kasi tapos na. At least ipinaglaban natin lahat ng mga bagay na yan. Pero pagkatapos nun, tanggapin na natin ang kalooban ni Lord. And then let's find ways to be able to move forward together in unity, standing with each other kasi isang bansa pa rin, lang naman, pa, pa rin naman tayo. At, ipag, at, at itong susunod na to na anim na taon, ganun ulit. Ka, ka, kumbaga, kapit busy ulit tayo pag tulong-tulungan natin yung sitwasyon ng bansa natin in terms of nation building. That was our call as the church. Primarily because who we are is way bigger than just the government. Did you know that? That the church is way bigger than the government of any nation. Because God's church, especially His universal church, you know, in terms of His agenda on the earth, God is working it out through the church. And in terms of God's agenda on the earth of bringing salvation to all the nations, His purpose is way bigger than any national election. So hopefully we'll be able to embrace that Take, uh, take, uh, kumaga, be able to grasp that somehow and finally find a way to be able to move forward together. Now, ito pong kwento na to ni Daniel, it's actually a good way to be able to pick up from what happened the past two weeks. Background story, um, na- narinig nyo naman yung buong kwento mula sa verses 17 to 31. Ano ang nangyari from verses 1 to 16? O, ito po, patay na si Nebuchadnezzar. Yung kwento nung last, last week natin, di ba si Nebuchadnezzar, biglang nangyari sa kanya yun, in-acknowledge niya si God. Gumawa siya ng open letter to his kingdom, to his empire, and told them na ang worship natin, matindi itong wonders and signs nitong God na ito. Yun. So, kwento niya yun. Tapos ngayon, uh, ngayon, um, tawag dito, successor niya na ang, ang, ano, ang, ang ruler, si Belshazzar. Hindi siya na anak. Other translations would say predecessor at saka successor. So predecessor si Nebuchadnezzar, successor kasi merong pang evil Merodach at least may isa pang hari na anak talaga ni Nebuchadnezzar na nag in between pero dalawang taon lang. Maiksi lang yung naging panahon niya. So eto na ngayon si Belshazzar, siya na ngayon yung ruler. Tapos medyo nagpa-party siya, isang libo ang kanyang officials na mga, na mga kasama ron sa party. Mas matindi pa rito. Actually, nagulat ako na makita ko po. Tabi-tabi na talaga tayo. Ayos. Ang saya naman ito. Parang Lord, bumalik na talaga ang mga tao. Nakakatuwa naman. Thank you for your courage to worship on site with us. And for those of you worshiping with us online, salamat. Kasi kasama pa rin namin kayo. Now at the same time, so anong yari nung isang libo to na nagpa-party, biglang siguro kainitan na. Baka medyo languna ng konti. Biglang sabi ni Belshazzar, ilabas nga yung lahat ng mga sacred articles na kinuha doon sa Diyos ng mga ganito doon sa Jerusalem kasi magaganda nga naman yun. Articles of gold and silver. So inilabas, biglang doon sila ngayon nag-inuman. Tapos eh, at that moment, that was like the height of uh, um, tawag dito, sacrilege. Kasi sacred items yun. Di ba? Alam nyo po yung, kumbaga, only the priests of the temple can use those articles. And now, here are regular people and King Belshazzar, a pagan king, tas kasama niya raw yung kanya mga wives, concubines, and the rest of their officials. At dinala pa to the next level. Ginamit yung mga yon to be able to worship and praise the gods of silver, gold, iron, wood, and bronze. So that was idolatry. Dahil doon, nagalit talaga si Lord, ginudge siya on the spot si Belshazzar. Biglang may lumitaw na kamay. Nagsulat sa dingding. At sinulat itong Mene, Mene, Tekel, Parsin. Nakasulat. Eh, hindi nila ma-recognize yung sulat. Actually, Aramaic po yung words na yun, uh, which, which is like an ancient language to them. At syempre, sila ay Babylonians. Maghanap sila ng mga taong pwede mag, ano, mag-interpret, pero wala rin makapag-interpret. So biglang ni-remind ngayon ni Queen. Yung Queen po na ito, posibleng hindi ito yung kanyang, hindi asawa. Posible itong nanay. Okay. Baka Queen Mother. Kasi si Queen Mother ang nag-remind. Alam mo ba? History, binalikan. Si King Nebuchadnezzar, meron siyang isang guy. Go-to guy niya to, si Daniel. In fact, pinangalanan niya tong Belteshazzar. Matindi to kasi chief of the magicians nga ito at some point. Pero ngayong panahon na to, posible siyang retard na. <laughs> kasi matagal na ito eh, mula nung panahon nung magsimula si Nebuchadnezzar. So hindi na, siya yung, hindi na siya prominently serving in the king's court. 
So biglang pinatawag ngayon si si Daniel, tapos nang pumunta, ito na yon. We pick up the story in verse 17. Biglang pagdating ni Daniel, binigyan siya ng pangako ni King Belshazzar. Sabi niya, nako, iyo honor kita, bibigyan kita ng purple robe, saka medal, medalyon. Tapos magiging rapper ka na. Hindi, hindi yun ang magiging ito. Pero ang point, pagdating nun, tapos magiging third ruler in this kingdom. Tapos biglang, sabi niya, sayo na yon. Sabi ni Daniel, sayo na yon. So biglang, let, let's pick up the story now. In verse 17, it says there, Then Daniel answered and said before the king, Let your gifts be for yourself. Yung. Let your gifts be for yourself and give your rewards to another. I love that kasi hindi naman siya parang mayabang, pero Daniel understood where he stands. He is not beholden to this king. Hindi siya yung parang nagaamot ng favor, na sana talaga bigyan mo ko ng pabor para maging great naman ako. Alam ni Daniel na siya ay prophet of the Most High, Nagsalita na siya kay Nebuchadnezzar, nakinig si Nebuchadnezzar at some point, tapos ngayon biglang kausap niya to si Belshazzar, at pagdating sa rango, kung rango ang pag-uusapan, because he serves the Most High God, kahit na ito ay king ng Babylonian Empire, mas mataas pa rin ang kalagayan ni Daniel. He does not need King Belshazzar to be able to honor him. He already has, he, he already has that coming from his God. So sabi ngayon ni, ano, ni Daniel, let your gifts be for yourself and give your rewards to another. Nevertheless, I will read the I, I, will, I will read the writing to the king and make known to him the interpretation. Then Daniel answered and said before the king, "Let your gifts be." I sorry, O King, the Most High, O King, the Most High God gave Nebuchadnezzar your father kingship and greatness and glory and majesty. I like that. Biglang nag-go back to history. Your father or kaya your predecessor. Sabi niya, Naalala mo naman si Nebuchadnezzar. Inexalt siya ni Lord. Tapos pansin ninyo mismo yung sabi, O King, the Most High the most high God gave Nebuchadnezzar. That's important because every king has to recognize it's not because of his own ability that got him there. The kingdom was simply given to him. In fact, sa dulo ng kwento, verse 31, napansin nyo ba? Darius the Mid, he received the kingdom. He did not win it by his military prowess. He simply received the kingdom. Who gives? It's the Most High God. So makikita mo, dito pa lang, makikita mo na kaagad yung trend nung sino ba talaga ang totoong ruler? Oh yeah, you're right. You're right. In many ways, okay, in many ways, by the end of the month of June, we will recognize a new president. But we will not crown him king. You know why? Because our king would still be God. Si Lord pa rin yung sobrang mas mataas. Kasi si Lord pa rin naman talaga ang may hawak ng mga bagay na to. And the kingdoms and the presidencies are simply given by Him and assigned by Him to people. I hope we are able to somehow get that. It, it, it's okay to grapple with that whole idea. Kasi para siyang talaga ba? Makikita natin in a short while kung paano expressly sasabihin ni Daniel ito coming from the experience of Nebuchadnezzar. But when his heart was lifted up, nung yumabang si Nebuchadnezzar, and his spirit was hardened, so that he dealt proudly, he was brought down from his kingly throne, and his glory was taken from him. Tindi nito. Itong si Nebuchadnezzar, nung una, ayos, ang galing. Ang galing nung ginagawa niya. Kung mag maayos siya, kaya lang, at some point, nagina siyang proud, at nung magina siyang proud, hindi niya na-recognize si Lord. At nakita natin to sa Daniel chapter 4, biglang bringing down na siya. God. He was driven from among the children of mankind and his mind was made like that of a beast and his dwelling was with the wild donkeys. He was fed like a grass, uh, he was fed grass like an ox and his body was wet with the dew of heaven at ito yung importante na phrase. Until he knew that the most high God rules the kingdom of mankind and sets over it whom he will. I love that phrase. I love that phrase. Yung last part na yon. Hindi ibinalik ni God kay Nebuchadnezzar yung kingdom o yung empire hanggat hindi niya in-acknowledge na oo nga, bossing pala kayo. Hindi pala ako ang bossing. Kayo nga pala, Lord. He says there, until he knew that the Most High God rules the kingdom of mankind and sets over it whom he will. This is good theology. What do we mean by that? Good theology when we say that the Most High God rules the kingdom of mankind and sets over it whom he will. There's more than 20 nations this year that are having their elections also. God is doing something in the world. Think about that. 
for a moment. All right. So if God rules all of the world, then our nation is a simple matter for Him. And if God rules our nation, then our city is a simple matter for Him. If God rules our city, then your family is a simple matter for Him. If God rules your family, then you, your issues, concerns, lahat ng mga dinadala mo, it's a simple matter for Him. Magandang panggalingan itong theology na to na, oo nga, ang Lord, si Lord nga palang may hawak ng lahat ng mga bagay. E di paliitin mo pa yan, paliitin mo na gusto, ang simple lang ng mga pinagdadaanan ko in light of what God is doing in all of the nations. At kung kaya niyang galawin ng mga bansa, mas lalo niya nang kayang ayusin ang buhay ko. Mas lalo niya nang kayang ayusin yung pamilya ko. The Most High God rules. And madalas, madalas, meron ka rin sarili mong maliit na kingdom. At doon sa maliit mo na kingdom, Katulad din tayo ni Nebuchadnezzar, ipinipilit natin yung mga sarili nating bagay, diskarte, sinusubukan natin kontrolin ang mga bagay, sinusubukan natin na hindi, ako yan, kaya ko yan. Tapos biglang pumapalya, di ba? Hindi maayos. In fact, for some of us, nawala. That which you were trying to build, parang katulad ng mga sand, ano, sand castles sa beach. Biglang isandaan lang nung alon, biglang nag-high tide lang, nawala. Dumaan yung pandemic, nawala. Tapos pag inisip mo, Lord, grabe yun ah. O ito, alam mo ba na pwedeng ibalik yun ni Lord sa'yo? Di naman siya intimidated na i-bless ka, anak ka niya eh. Gusto kanya in fact i-bless. Pero kung ang dahilan, nung pagbibuild na yun to begin with, yung sarili mong discard and you were building your own kingdom, then it might be good for you, just like Nebuchadnezzar, come to a place of acknowledgement and say, The Most High God rules over my life and He gives blessing to whom He wills. And Lord, I would like to look to you. I would like to build the way you would build. I would like to build or to live my life according to biblical principles. I'd like to treat my wife in the way you've commanded me in Scripture. I'd like to raise my kids in the way, in the, in the values that come from your word. Lord, I'd like to treat my friends, treat my family, treat my co-workers, treat my employees. Lord, the way that you would want me with justice and generosity and blessing. Lord, sige na nga po. I consider you. I recognize you. I surrender to you as Lord. And now, Lord, salamat. Kasi I'd like to be able to build like you would. I'd like to build from this perspective that the most high rules. At katulad nung kay Nebuchadnezzar, baka ma-experience mo. Until you've come to that realization, only then will you experience the blessing, the favor, and the grace of God come on whatever it is that your hands are building. All of a sudden, you experience God's favor apprehend you in many ways. Importante tong theology na to, lalo na dun sa usapang gobyerno. And in the end, you'll come to God and just say, Lord, we accept your will, we worship you, and we're grateful because kahit na sino pa man ang mag ng bansa namin, you promised blessing for our nation because you are the true Lord. Kayo naman ang tunay talaga na Lord ng bansang Pilipinas. The Most High God rules the kingdom of mankind and sets, uh, sets over it whom He will. Let's continue the story. It says in the next verse, verse 22, And you, his son Belshazzar, have not humbled your heart, though you knew all this. Kayo na control Though you knew all this, but you have lifted up yourself against the Lord of heaven. So, parang sabi niya, Belshazzar, alam mo na yung kwento to, narinig mo na to. In fact, nangyari to. Parang hindi mo siya pwedeng i-deny. And yet, ikaw, tinuloy mo lang. Ginawa, ginawa mo pa rin yung katulad nung ginawa nung predecessor mo. But you have lifted up yourself against the Lord of heaven. Hindi ka lang hindi nag pero biglang naging maangas ka pa. Alam mo yung, eh, yung ginawa niyo nung gabi na yun, medyo maangas talaga yun. Medyo yung, alam mo yung brought it to the next level, na tara, inuman tayo using the sacred articles. Eh, alam niya eh, na yung may-ari nito, yung God na sinorenderan ni Nebuchadnezzar. Al- alam niya yun. Tas, and yet, he, tapos biglang ginamit pa yun, di ba ginagamit yun, yung magpo-pour ka ng libations uh, para dun sa mga iba-ibang mga gods. You pour wine like that, for example, to the ground for a particular god. And they even use that to be able to worship. So talagang may isip mo, man, to the next level, parang dinisrespect mo talaga si Lord ng matinde. And the vessels of His house have been brought in before you and you and your lords, your wives, and your concubines have drunk wine from them and you have praised the gods of silver and gold, of bronze, iron, wood, and stone, which do not see or hear or know. And then take note. But the God in whose hand is your breath, 
and whose are all your ways, you have not honored. So you have two options. Lahat po tayo, meron tayong mga places natin of influence and leadership. You have two options in terms of how you build. You could build, you could build according to your own design, what you want, and towards idolatry. You could use the gifts that God's given you and use it towards idolatry. You could give the influence, the leadership position, the role uh, that God's given you and use it towards idolatry. Well, what idolatry are we talking about? Well, nung Old Testament po, ang, ang, ano, ang idolatry would be man-made gods. Sa panahon natin, oo, man-made gods pa rin, pero may dagdag na, lalo. Anything, anything that catches your heart more than God. Anything that competes with God in terms of being number one in your life, being the Lord of your life. Anything that you pursue more than God, that's idolatry. So whether that be your business, whether that be your dreams, whether that be a particular person, that has taken over your heart and such that you're willing to abandon everything. Okay, hayaan mo na si Lord, bahala na siya, basta ito ang gusto ko, ito ang gusto ko. Kung ano man yung idolatry na yon at ginamit mo yung God-given life na ibinigay sa ni Lord, kung ano man yung kapakakayahan mo, ability mo, yun yung parang, it's sacred what God has given you. It's like using those same sacred articles from the temple and using it towards idolatry. You could live your life in that way and try to pursue you, build your own kingdom, and try to pursue our idolatries using the things that God has given us. Tapos, si Lord, at some point, He will allow circumstances to be able to help you understand that that will not work. That's not the way to live life. That's not the way to build. Yun yung nangyari kay Belshazzar. Now, or you could build another way. Lord, the sacred life you've given me, the gifts, the abilities, the position, the role, the leadership influence, the capacity to be a blessing. Lord, sige nga po, God, gamitin nga po yung mga bagay na to para kayo po ang ma-honor. Yun mismo yung sinabi ni Daniel. You have not honored the God who holds your breath and who holds all your ways. Would you be willing to build this way? To build this way. Lahat tayo may kanya-kanya tayong sitwasyon. Ang buhay natin, usually, merong mga areas na talagang maayos, pero merong mga areas na alam mo, o yun, medyo alihis talaga ito sa kagustuhan ni Lord. Yung mga, pag, yung, yung mga punto na yon, tara, balik ka ulit. Surrender that area of your life, let go of that, and let the sacred life that God's given you be completely lived out for Him and for Him alone. Do you know what that's called? It's called Lordship. It's good, old-fashioned Lordship. Jesus is the Lord of your life. Your life does not belong to you. Give it all to Him. Your family does not belong to you. Give it all to Him. Your business does not belong to you. Even though you built it with your bare hands from the ground up, it does not belong to you. It was given to you. Even the ability to produce wealth, it is the Lord who gives that to you. Wherever you might be in life, kung ano man ang narating mo sa buhay, people would say, you're a self-made man. You're right. You're right. Because it start, ikaw ang first generation rich. Ikaw din ang, kumbaga talagang ang dahil mong pinagdaanan sa buhay, tapos biglang pagdating doon, talagang pag inisip naman, ibang klase ka naman talaga mag-persevere. Ibang klase yung tiyaga mo, ibang klase yung tenacity mo. Totoo, you're a self-made man, but then again, probably not. You're a God-made man. God still made you. God still gave that to you. You simply received it from His hand. Would you be willing to honor Him completely with it? That's the only way to live life. Galing nung kay Daniel, no? Second lesson from this passage, for those of us in leadership, we are simply stewards and must humble ourselves before God. Belshazzar was in leadership. God gave him his kingdom, his kingship. Several of you here, you're actually in prominent places of leadership. God gave you that leadership. Alam ko, oh, matindi pag-aaral mo. Kumbaga, meron ka pang Latin honors nung graduate ka, nag-aral ka pa abroad, tapos meron ka pang pool, meron ka pang padrino, kaya ka nga napunta dyan, sa role mo na yan. So matindi ka talaga, ina-acknowledge natin yun. Pero, ito na siya ngayon, you're simply a steward of that leadership position, role, influence, capacity that God's put you in. You've simply received that from God. What do you do with it? You could, you could either be proud and say, yeah, I did this by my own hands. I did it my way. Or you could humble yourself and not wait for situations to humble you. Yung, yung kwento nung last Sunday, napansin nyo ba yun? Nung kausap ni God mismo sa Nebuchadnezzar, 
Ang ginamit niya talaga doon, i-humble mo sarili mo, nebukad ni Sar. Pero biglang, naglalakad-lakad siya sa roof deck niya. Nakita niya yung city of Babylon. Antindi talaga ng city of Babylon na ginawa ko. Yun, biglang God struck him down right there. You know what God did? God humiliated him before people. So it's really our choice. You can choose to humble yourself before God or you can choose to wait for God's humiliation of you. Humility or humiliation. Your choice. Pero either way will happen. Kapag naman hinambol mo sarili mo, the Lord will further exalt you. He will increase your leadership. He will increase the influence. He will increase you being a blessing to your constituents, to the people whom you serve. Or God could cut, cut that right in the middle of your efforts, humiliate you before people, let circumstances turn around on you and you find yourself with nothing. Pero buti na lang, even at that point, until you acknowledge that the Most High God rules. Kasi kay Nebuchadnezzar, nung napandapa na siya, he lifted his eyes to heaven. And in that moment, his sanity came back to him. And, God, and he recognized the king of heaven. And then he received back his rulership and his kingdom. So may restoration naman si Lord. Pag in the end, basta in the end, nag-humble down ka pa rin. So kapag hindi ka nag-humble down, judgment will come. In what way? Ito na. Verse 24, Then from his presence the hand was sent, and his writing was, this writing was inscribed. And this is the writing that was inscribed. Mene, mene, tekel, and parsin. This is the interpretation of the matter. Mene. Okay. Sa atin, marami. Oh, marami. God has numbered. Kaya, ne, ne, ne. Yung word po na mene is actually Aramaic for numbered. So God has numbered. It, applicable sa Pinoy, di ba? Oh, mene. God has numbered the days of your kingdom and brought it to an end. Sunod, tekel. Nung nag ka, kulang. Okay, tekel. You've been weighed in the balances and found one thing. Okay. Uh, mali po yung interpretation na yun. Paso Jeff, nakakahawa ka. Okay. Pero alam ko naman, hindi. tekel means weighed. Sa Aramaic ulit. Eh, eh di ba, ang, ang hirap noon, yung, <laughs> nasubukan mo na to, yung may makarap kang tao, kausap ka, inintroduce ka, tapos bigla kang tinignan, mula sa ulo hanggang pa. <laughs> Sinukat ka. Yo, sinukat ka in that moment. At after that, meron na siyang prejudice. Ko ano man yung kanyang sukat sa'yo. Now, eto si Lord, pag siya sumukat, maayos, hindi lang kasi siya tumitingin sa externals. Tumit- Alam ni Lord ang buong katauhan mo. Yung buong pagkatao mo. Alam ni Lord lahat ng history mo. So pag sinukat ka niya, accurate. Kaya nga maganda yon. In your own times of moments na nagpe-pray ka, um, minsan habaan mo ng konti yung devotions mo. Tapos makinig ka lang kay Lord. Tapos tanungin mo, siya, tanungin mo sa kanya itong tanong na to. Lord, kumusta ba ako? Lord, pakisukat naman ako. Kasi magandang marinig kay Lord na anak, ayos ka. Ah, that's good to hear. You receive approval from God. You know that God's pleased with you. Now, alam nyo ba that because of Jesus, pag sinukat ka ni Lord ngayon, you are justified kumpleto ka na. Wala ka nang kailangan. Wala ka, hindi ka nakulang. Yun yun ang kagandahan pagdating sa, Lord, thank you. Yun ang gospel. Pero, hindi ka nakulang to be able to stand before God. Pero, sasabihin pa rin sa'yo ni Lord, anak, pero itong area na to ng buhay mo, ayusin natin. Ayusin natin. Magandang magpasukat ki Lord kasi dun manggagaling ngayon yung transformation ng buhay mo. Sasabihin niya sa'yo, ito yung bahagi na to ng buhay mo, tara, tulungan kita, ayusin kita rito. Pero kailangan mo tong isurrender. Kailangan mo tong bitawan. Kailangan mo tong i-give up. Kailangan mo tong i-forsake. Kailangan mo tong i-deny. Pero pag binigay mo na yan sa akin, aayusin natin yan. Aayusin ko yan. Tekel. Peres. Your kingdom is divided. Again, the word peres is Aramaic for divided. And given to the Medes and Persians. Also, that word peres, kadikit din daw siya nung, nung word mismo na person. So parang, parang nag-double meaning na na binanggit na peres, it will be divided because it will be given to the peres, to the persons. So peres. So judgment came because Belshazzar did not humble himself. So to say that again, for those of us in leadership, we are simply stewards and must humble ourselves before God. Now as we conclude the story, we go back to verse, we go to verse 29. Then Belshazzar gave the command immediately and Daniel was clothed with purple. Ang na-imagine ko ito, yung parang mga cartoons, yung parang on the spot, biglang na ganun si Belshazzar, tapos biglang, tadaan, may bago ng damit si Daniel. Tapos meron na siyang medalyon, tapos biglang in-honor na siya. He made a pro- proclamation. And a proclamation was made about him that he should be the third ruler in the kingdom. Now, what happened there? Parang, grabe, no? 
grabe yung kumbaga, from obscurity ni Daniel, he was not serving in the king's court anymore. And then he was brought again to that place of prominence. What happened? Because Daniel was faithful in serving. Daniel was faithful in serving. I mentioned to you a while ago, no? for those who of us who are in leadership, you're simply stewards and you must humble yourself before God and be used of God to, to use that leadership role and function to be a blessing to your people, to your constituents, to the people God entrusted to you. So go ahead and do that. But for all of us, for all of us, us who may not necessarily be in leadership roles or in prominent leadership roles, for all of us, we must be, continue to be faithful to serve whether in obscurity or prominence. Daniel was still faithful. Na-imagine nyo ba kung si Daniel inabandon niya na yung faith niya kay God? Tapos bigla siya ngayong haharap sa king, tapos, oh king, eh hindi, wala na siyang maayos na relationship with God. Inabandon niya na. Pagdating doon, na nga. Di ba? Parang, anong masasabi niya doon sa king? Wala na siya nung the spirit of the gods na sinasabi nung queen mother. Parang wala na siya nung, He was faithful in walking with God. He was faithful in serving with God. He was faithful in holding on to his faith such that when it, when it was needed, once again, he had the wisdom of God to be able to speak to the king. All of us. Di ba? Meron mga iba sa atin na parang gusto mo prominent place of leadership. Alam mo ba na ang obscure place of leadership is as effective? Because God does not measure the obscurity or the prominence. God measures faithfulness. Think about that. Diba yung tatlo, given talents? Yung isa binigyan na isa, isa binigyan tatlo, isa binigyan ng lima. Or nagulo na ako ng kwento, may one tsaka may one, five tsaka may ten, merong one tsaka three, may five. Pero same principle. Pareho lang ang reward. Doon sa binigyan ng five tsaka binigyan ng three, kasi ang sinukat ni Lord, good and faithful servant. Yung isa na dagdagan ng lima, edi dapat parang mas palakpakan yun. Hindi. Pareho lang. Bakit? Kasi faithfulness ang hinahanap ni Lord. So whether God has assigned you an obscure place to serve, di mo lang ako prominent, di mo lang ako naging team leader, grabe yung pana promote, eh, eh wala, eh, mas matinu pa ako dyan. Ako nga, lagi akong on time, samantalang yan. Petix lang. God's given you a place in obscurity, serve. Be faithful. Because the Lord will be the one to multiply the results of your hands. Faithfulness for all of us, whether in prominence or in obscurity. Tapos, sa, su- sa dulo niyan, si Lord mismo. Si Lord mismo ang, ang mag... Ito siya, si Lord ang magmumultiply ng results ng effort mo. Magbigay po ako ng isang matinding halimbawa. Multiply ng results ng effort mo. Magbigay po ako ng isang matinding halimbawa. Um, for the past 38 years, we've been... As, as a church, no po, Victory has been serving in many ways, in obscurity. Ito na lang padulo, nung medyo, ayan na, may mga ilang artista, o kaya ilang prominent people, na biglang susunod, uy, ayan na, victory. Pero alam nyo na, for the first decades, we were just serving in obscurity. Tapos, even in the advent of those, even with that, we still run away from all of that prominence. We just wanted to continue to serve. Kasi, right from the beginning, our leaders, our leaders have resolved that our contribution to nation building is discipleship. It's discipleship. And discipleship happens in the background, in homes, in conversations. It's not usually broadcasted. Ito pong, dumating na lang sa point. Dumating na sa point na ngayon, binibigyan na tayo ni Lord ng, uy, mas marami-rami na tayong nagagawa. Biglang halimbawa po, dito sa, sa mga mayor ng Maynila, meron dyang apat na naaasikaso natin sa context ng discipleship. Merong isa na galing kids church na eventually naging ang mayor. Pero yung prominence na yun, hindi yun ang hinahanap natin. Ang hinahanap natin, yung discipleship. Ituloy lang to. Kasi, hindi lang naman government ang nangangailangan ng leader. Kailangan sa akadim, kailangan sa negosyo, kailangan sa business, kailangan sa arts and media, kailangan sa, uh, kailangan sa families, mas lalong kailangan sa families. So ginagawa po natin for the past 38 years, disciple lang the disciple, disciple ng tatay, disciple ng nanay, reach out ng kum- sa komunidad. Tapos meron dyan mga ilalagay si Lord na maglang iaangat niya. Sa panahon po na to, meron tayong at least 20 plus, 20 plus sa buong Pilipinas na mga talagang galing victory na mga talagang nag-serve doon at members talaga ng church na ngayon in different places of leadership. All the way from barangay captain to senador. Tas, do we, broad, we don't broadcast that even. Bakit? Kasi discipleship lang. 
Alam nyo ba na meron tayong victory group sa Senado? Alam nyo ba na meron tayong pag mga merong mga bill na mga ipinapasa tapos kailangan ayusin? We have consultations dun sa mismong author ng bill at with our bishops and they have conversations offline. Offline. Para maisaayos yung laman ng bill na yun, para mas maging maayos at least according to scriptural standards. And we've seen that come to na napupunta doon sa eventual na itsura ng bill. Meron tayong mga meron tayong mga marami tayong mga at the back offices ng both Congress and Senate na mga doon nagtatrabaho ng mga graduate mula sa atin mga estudyante natin dati. Tapos sila yung ngayon yung mga clerk, sila ngayon yung lawyer na nandoon sa opisina, sila yung actual na nagsusulat ng mga bill. Pero we don't necessarily broadcast that. Kasi we let the people just serve in obscurity. You know why? Because we're believing our, our contribution to nation building, it's discipleship. And the day will come that there will be a critical mass. We will have leaders, some prominent, many obscure, who are just serving in the background and yet discipling the people in places of influence throughout the land. Oh, ito po, isang matindi. 15 years na ang Real Life Foundation. Sinelebrate lang natin last month. Nandito po kami, nag-gather kami with several school administrators na partners ng Real Life. Alam nyo ba sa 15 years, nakapagpag-graduate pa lang tayo ng mga 520 plus yata? Pero currently, meron tayong 1,000 plus na scholars. Ano ba naman ang magagawa ng 500 plus na graduates, di ba? At 1,000 plus na scholars. Sa, pangaila, sa poverty. Y- yun ang gusto natin isolve dun eh. Poverty ng Pilipinas. Pero alam nyo ba ng bawat isang scholar na gumagraduate, at the very least, nagtitriple ang household income pag graduate ng isang scholar. O isang pamilya lang yan. Masaya na yon, di ba? Parang grabe. Meron na tayong ngayong 500 plus of those. At yung mga real life scholars kasi natin, may kasamang discipleship at leadership development yan. Kaya kapag yan nag, nag, nagtatrabaho na, iba talaga. Iba, yung, yung alam mo, may kisig, may stature, may leadership kagad. O, pero parang how far will that go when it comes to the poverty line of our nation? Won't even make a dent. You're just talking 500 families. But what if the, eventually that becomes 100,000? 100,000 families. How long will that take? 50 years? Maybe? But we're here, we're, here, we're doing that. Po, we call it the long game. The long game of discipleship to eventually see this whole nation discipled. And even if it will take us another 50 to 100 years, we just continue to do that. Continue to do that until such time that the Lord exalts certain people to be in prominence who are leading, but the rest of us are just serving in obscurity. But we are so involved in seeing this nation discipled to see this nation built. For all of us, we must continue to be faithful to serve, whether in obscurity or prominence. Let me conclude with verse 30. That very night, Belshazzar the Chaldean king was killed, and Darius the Mede received the kingdom, being about 62 years old. Sa dulo ng kwento, the Lord judged the one who was proud, and the Lord once again, once again, in, in proof of the fact that he holds the rulers of the earth, he gave the kingdom to another person. At alam nyo ba na yan? Was already prophesied dun pa lang sa unang dream ni Nebuchadnezzar. Yung man, gold, silver, bronze, and then feet of clay and iron, na prophesied na yung pagkakasunod-sunod na. In history, alam natin, ito yung Babylon, after that, the Medo-Persians, tapos after that, the Greeks, and then after that, the, ano, the, the Romans. Tapos yung lahat ng mga detalye na yun, ng mga maliliit na bagay, biglang makikita mo talaga in history kung ilang kings, kung ilan sa ganito, ilang ganyan. It's amazing how it has been prophesied. So alam mo na kaagad, si Lord talaga ang may hawak ng lahat ng mga bagay na yan all throughout history. Just to summarize, ito po yung tatlo natin pinag-usapan. The Most High God rules the kingdom of mankind and sets over it whom He will. That's important. So, in, in response to that, in response to that, pagkatapos po ng eleksyon, tara, let's move forward na. Reconcil- Ministry of Reconciliation tayo. Peacemaking, unity. Let's move forward with that. Bakit? Because we recognize that God is the one who gives it to whom He will. Secondly, for those of us in leadership, we're simply stewards and must humble ourselves before God. So I pray, I pray that you who are in leadership recognize that God placed you there and He can replace you. Ibig sabihin ng replace, mapapalitan o kaya replace. Aalisin ka doon, ilalagay ka sa ibang lugar. Tapos okay lang yon, Kasi nagsiserve ka lang faithfully. And for all of us, we must continue to, faith, to be faithful to serve whether in obscurity or prominence. Did you know that God is also doing the long game? How do we know that? For all of the world, in terms of his agenda on the world, he's been, he has been faithfully and you know, 
he has been orchestrating all of the world and all of history to be able to fulfill his purpose. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 9. The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. The Lord is working out his plans in the earth, setting kingdoms to whoever they should. And goal, to be able to bring the gospel to every place on earth. And the Lord is doing the long game. He's taking his time. Why? So that none may perish and that all would come to repentance. I'd like to invite everyone to stand as we conclude in prayer. So you're a charge to us, to every one of us. Let us multiply godly leaders in our land. Let that be for those of us who are in a place to be able to do this. Let's multiply godly leaders in our land. Yun ang dahilan kung ba't ka nag-victory group. Yun ang dahilan kung ba't nag-raise up ka ng group leader. Alam mo ba pag nagiging group leader, tapos kailangan mo nang mag-lead, mas nagiging matinudo ng buhay mo, kasi kailangan mo magbasa ng Bible. <laughs> kailangan mo nang mag-devotions. Which is good, right? Good. Kasi meron ka nang, may mga tao nang umaasa sa'yo, may tinuturuan ka na every week. So, ayos yun. God's making you to be a leader. Whether serving in obscurity or, prem, pro, uh, or prominence, all of that contributes to discipling this nation. I'd like to just pray at this juncture and then invite Pastor Jeff to come up. Lord, would you be the one to bless all of our people? Bless us, Lord, in our places of leadership and influence. Allow us to serve faithfully. Lord, I'm praying for an encouragement. Those of us, Lord, who need encouragement to continue to serve faithfully. Father, I pray that you would encourage them. Encourage them, Lord, with your plan, with your purpose. Encourage them, Lord, that even when in obscurity, it's faithfulness you're looking from them. And you'll be the one to work things out on their behalf. For those of us, Lord, who are in prominent places of leadership, Lord, today we charge them to use that leadership position, that leadership function and role to be able to bless their constituents, to be able to bring the gospel. Let that become a platform for the gospel. Lord, that place of leadership and influence that they have. Father, enable all of us. We pray, Lord, raise us up to be leaders. Leaders in our homes, leaders in our communities. And whether we serve in prominence or obscurity, Father, we pray, enable us to be faithful. Because in the end, you will use all of our efforts to be able to disciple this nation. Lord, thank you for using us in that way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Pastor John. Let's give another round of applause for Pastor John. Thank you so much. Grabe, Pastor John. Such a powerful reminder, guys. I was convicted actually, kanina. Um, I think there's a call for, I mean, for us Christians. Uh, if you're that person who promotes, alam mo yon, disunity, discord, ikaw pa'y promotor minsan na parang you feel like because your presidential laws and all, parang you feel like nawala na rin lahat. Our God is in control. It will take more than six years of one president to change this nation because God changes nation. He's the one who can steer the hearts of people. And sometimes we have this jackpot mentality na, hindi, maging presidente lang, ito, ganyan, okay na. I mean, United States had their chance of having a godly president. So the point is, just be faithful where God has placed you. I think there's a moment here we need to repent. Some of you, you've been accusing some fellow Christians, why are you not making a stand? Why are you not putting something on Facebook or something. I think Pastor John clearly stated it. We don't have to pronounce it. We don't have to post it on social media. Just be faithful in discipling the very person na kasama mo kumakain paggabi. That's your children. You'll never know the next president may be coming from your own homes and yet you're not being faithful as a father. I need to repent. We need to repent. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, repent and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will heal their land. Are you believing that our nation one day will be healed? Of course! Come on. Si Lord po ang pag-asa ng ating bansa. So maybe we're gonna pray. Ikaw na parang feeling mo natalo yung presidential mo. Or maybe you, you're so mayabang dahil nanalo yung presidential mo. Si God po magbabago ng bansa natin. Just be faithful to where God has placed you. 
Lord, we're sorry. We're sorry because we put our faith on a person, on a presidential or a vice presidential or a senator. Lord, we're sorry because you said in your word that curse is the man who put their trust in men. Lord, we put our hope and trust in you. And as you promise in your word that those who put their trust in you will never be shaken. Baka kaya, Lord, kami shaken kasi we put our trust on a person. So right now, Lord, we repent. And we ask that the ministry of reconciliation, Lord God, will be impressed in our heart that you have called us to be peacemakers. Blessed are the peacemakers. So Father, right now, we, we repent for being an initiator of this unity, anger, resentment, whatever. Help us, Lord God, to be faithful in the calling you have given us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Come on. All right. Before we leave, one final announcement. Paul, can you flash that to the screen? Yung number natin for uh, starter group. We want you to be there. That's going to be in June. Please register. If you're not part of any small group, victory group, please be part of that. I'm going to sure you're going to have a great time. God bless you, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>